Welcome to Roofing Road Trips, the podcast that takes you on a thrilling journey across the world of roofing. From fascinating interviews with roofing experts to on-the-road adventures, we'll uncover the stories, innovations, and challenges that shape the rooftops over our heads. So fasten your seatbelts and join us as we embark on this exciting roofing road trip. Hello, everyone. My name is Megan Ellsworth here at RoofersCoffeeShop.com, and I am back with a roofing road trip. Welcome to Roofing Road Trips. I'm so excited. I'm here with Tony and Kristen from High Peak Staffing. Hello. Hi, Megan. Um, I'm excited. We're talking about vetting the vetters today. So how to, you know, put in a vetting process when you're hiring and working with a staffing uh, company like High Peak Staffing. So Tony, let's have you get us started and just introduce yourself and High Peak Staffing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, Megan, for having us on again. Um, I wouldn't call us professional just yet, but <laughs> we're starting to get in the mix with a few of these podcasts. We really are excited about our future, future growth, things that we see happening with not only High Peak Staffing, but with Roofers Coffee Shop in that partnership. So we're super happy with that. But um, without further ado, I guess I'm Tony Case. I'm co-owner of High Peak Staffing with my beautiful wife, Kristen, that's also going to be speaking here. Um, we are, I'll let Kristen kind of give a little bit more background, but like I said, we're super excited about the future and, uh, the growth that we've seen. So I'll pass that to Kristen. So my name is Kristen Case, uh, co-owner of High Peak Staffing. We are a commercial residential coatings and manufacturing, uh, recruiting agency for the roofing industry. Um, and we're based out of Colorado. That's right. I live in Denver. Yes. You live Where do you all live? Close to us. Castle Rock. We're in Castle oh, Rock. That's right. Stuffing. We've talked about yeah. this. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Crazy. That Love was it. Ago, though, last time we talked to you. So, to get us started, can you tell us a little bit, you know, the backstory, the history of High Peak Staffing? What made you all start this company? Yes. So, I came, um, I'll go first. I, I came from recruiting 15 years, uh, 10 years in the roofing space, and timing just at the happened to work out for us about three years ago that we wanted to go out on our own and see, you know, if we could, we can do it. And so we started high peak staffing with just the two of us. Uh, we specialize, like I mentioned in roofing contracting. So we started with a couple of clients. We kind of grew from there. We're now we're, we work with over 40 uh, roofing contractors across the U S um, we're really breaking into the manufacturing and coatings market now as well. And we've built our team to about eight. So it's kind of, I came with most of the roofing background. Um, and then Tony, which he could uh, talk on is that he recruited a lot for college and in his previous roles. So when we kind of joined forces, it was, you know, off to the races immediately. Absolutely. So I know we've chatted before about using specialized recruiters in the hiring process, but to kind of reiterate, what should a contractor consider when choosing a recruiter? And Tony, I'll let you take this one. Well, we've kind of had it broken down into, you know, different things that, that someone should, should look into. And especially if you're a commercial roofing contractor and you are seeking help and you're, you're needing that assistance, that's the first thing that, that you should look for is who's going to be the best fit for me. And when deciding those factors is, you know, we've kind of broken it down into a few separate things. So are the, is the recruiter you're looking into the industry specific? And so that's probably the number one thing that we see people don't do is there's a lot of big box recruiters out there with thousands of employees that recruit anything under the sun. And they're just, a, it's a numbers game for them. They're trying to meet a metric. They're trying to meet a goal. They don't care who they send, how they send them. So that's probably the first thing up front, close and personal is, are, is the recruiter we're, we're vetting and we're vetting the vetter basically, are they industry specific? Do they know what we do? Are they familiar with what we do? And do they recruit and place people in our industry? That's number one. I think after that, you immediately are gonna have to look at their track record. What is the, you know, what does their placements look like? Are they familiar with our specific roles that we're working? So a lot of people are, you know, if you're just looking for laborers, that's one thing that might that might not be necessarily directly up our alley, which we'll do that every once in a while. But 
Mm -hmm. we're looking for project managers in six locations and this we're a national company we need project managers everywhere to have they is their proven track record that they can place those people um yeah do they understand our, our company and our culture and our what is that what does that look like for them um i think kristen does a fantastic job with building relationships and understanding what those what our clients culture is and needs and so that we can make that fit and that connection with our candidates to our clients um, and next, I think that you would have to look at what is your recruiting firm's candidate pool look like? Again, mm. if you go back to those big box recruiters, they might have a candidate pool of 55,000, 60,000, hundreds of thousands. How many of them are specific to your industry where we've built a candidate pool of 10,000 plus with roofers only? These are commercial roofers spe very specifically and very exclusively. So. Our candidate pool is that because we are industry specific. Um, how do you communicate with them? Are they open? Are they available? Is the person that sold you on their their company, is the person that, that you signed with, that you have familiarity with, is that the person you're going to be dealing with? Or are you going to be dealing with 10 other people? And so that what's, that's what makes Kristen and I's company unique is that we are that person. We are the direct line of communication. And if you can't get Kristen, you can always get me. If you can't get me, you can always get Kristen. So our recruiters report directly to us and we are the, the point of contact for our clientele. Um, after that, I would say, you know, what does the fee structure look like? What's your budget look like? What's their fee structure? Can can those th two things align? And after that, it's what do they do after they've made a placement? Are they out of town? Do they wipe their hands clean? Um, again, like a lot of people will do, not us, but that's uh, these are the questions that I would start with in asking as if you were looking for that, you know, that recruiter, if I'm a contractor and that's what I'm looking for. Those are the questions I'm going to ask. Amazing. Amazing. Um, I'd love to know maybe you, Kristen, how do you assess their industry knowledge? Um, because those are some great questions to ask, but maybe what questions should they ask if, if they want to vet that vetter um, and make sure that they know the roofing industry? Are coming from the client side to the recruiting agency. Um, yeah. Like if they're reaching out to us. Um, so, you know, I would say if you're specialized, you know, it's kind of the word of mouth does get out. People will know, you know, who you are. And if they don't, um, they may be able to poke around and figure out some of that information. But, you know, also looking at their job boards. Every job we have posted on our website is going to be related to the roofing industry. So you wouldn't mm. see like a dot net engineer or, um, you know, anything tech based because we don't specialize in tech. Um, and so, you know, knowing that all the roles that we are working is in the space that we're working, they can look at that. Um, they can look at any type of testimonials that previous either candidates or uh, clients, other agencies, their companies have um, written about them. Um, that's big for us yeah. because that's how we get a lot of our business is through referrals. So yeah, I would definitely, when you're doing your homework, you know, not just like looking on their LinkedIn or looking on their website, but kind of seeing what they specialize in, what they're posting, you know, and what their candidate pool looks like. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's great too that you have such a large candidate pool, like 10,000 plus in the roofing industry. That's big. Um, yeah. Congrats. Honestly, <laughs> that's a big number. Yeah. We put our, we put um, our recruiters to work. We're, we have them add, add, add. Yeah. yeah. Everyone that they talk to, um, we, we try to get them to, you know, put them in our system because you just never know, you know, if someone's maybe not looking today, their job situation can change in three days, three weeks, three months. Yeah. So you never yep. know when they might want that call. Yeah. Or they might just be like looking on the peripheral, yeah. right? They might have a job that they enjoy right now, but maybe, you know, something bigger and better comes along and you can reach out to them and they'll bite at it. Yeah, That's an excellent point, Megan, because Kristen does that routinely. You know, she's she's built those relationships over the past decade where if she comes across, you know, an A plus player, just somebody that's either she's worked with in the past or, you know, maybe has familiarity with her, they're comfortable enough to reach out to her as a candidate saying, you have my best interest in mind. Where do, where, where do I need to be? You tell me because she's got those connections. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's everyone be friends with Kristen is what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> on, my, on my good days. On so, my good days. Sure. Yes. 
<laughs> All days. <laughs> okay, so how does a contractor make sure um, the recruiter knows what they want in an employee and they get, you know, a vibe of their company culture? Uh, so this one is really big for me, and I feel like this is where a lot of my client retention comes from is because you know, not only on your initial job order call or intro call. So that's just when you're reaching out or they're reaching out to you to kind of test the waters of what do you guys do? What do you specialize in? How can you maybe help us? You know, and we, we get through all of those hurdles and we decide we want to move forward. One of my first questions is what does it look like on the day to day in the office? If this, this person is coming to work every day and it's not a remote role, what are they walking into? What's the environment like? Is it empty because everyone's out in the field or is it family like, is it, you know, a bunch of a players hitting the ball running in the morning? What are we looking for um, culturally and attitude wise? Yeah. Um, and so when we ask those questions, they're like kind of taken aback because they're like, oh, you're not just asking us what, you know, software they need to have or what experience and roofing systems they need to have. We need to understand, is this person going to work well with you, you, you and you, right? And so yeah. I really try to gauge, um, and I always take it back to my roots. I'm Italian Irish, so we're always judging people, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> in, our big, in our big family, right? So I am always yeah. like, you're going to have this person come in. You want everyone to like them, right? So don't just <laughs> send someone who's good on paper that it's going to walk in and it's not going to be a good vibe. We want them to walk in and be excited and enthusiastic about this person. So. That's what I would say is always making sure to just do your dig a little deeper, go beyond the surface level and find out what they are really looking for besides a certain software or five years of experience. Yeah. Yeah. And as the contractor, like make sure that the recruiter you're ha having work for you and hiring to recruit knows those things, knows yes. that you want someone that has a personality or is yeah. detail oriented and like maybe introverted. So they're more detail oriented or whatever, yeah. knowing those yeah. details. The only thing I would add to that is that Kristen is, is able to, and, and our team, myself included now is we're able to share some of those success stories and some of those failures where we've right. lived, we've learned, we understand that it's because we, we work nationally, we have, you know, clients and jobs in all, you know, 48 of the continental U United States. So we understand that sometimes this might come off as, you know, just a unicorn on paper and we're doing everything we can to vet them appropriately. And then they still don't work out. We have to learn from that. We have to adjust some of the questions we ask. We have to learn from those experiences. And Kristen's mm -hmm. already done that for over a decade. Our team's been doing that for decades on decades. And so that's something that we bring to the table that someone that recruits an IT person or, a, you know, someone outside the industry won't have any clue to do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and also, you know, you, you understand um, once you start figuring out your clients, you kind of understand what personalities are going to match and in what geographics they're going to match. So we just have to be really mindful <laughs> of like personality matches, you know, um, not because they're just at the end of the day, good on paper. I will walk away from more candidates, not, not presenting them to that particular role. If I know that I'm just basically going to waste my company's time. I, we are not an agency that's just trying to push resumes in front of a company. We're really trying to find yeah. that match. And it sounds cheesy, but it's true. I really am looking mm -hmm. for them to call me back and say, oh my gosh, slam dunk. Not, yeah, mm, we're not so sure about that person, you know? Yeah. I feel like you're so right with the geographical differences though, because yes. I mean, as a uh, born and raised Oregonian, <laughs> traveling to the East Coast is very, very different for me. <laughs> So, yeah, it's like intimidating, um, right? You know, yeah, it's like, intimidating. People are just different. <laughs> yeah, they're fast. So and, I think, and, and I, yeah, and I know that when I went. So that's like the value of building relationships. When you know, you know, a certain office, I know, no, I'm not going to send that person, or yes, I'm going to. And so those are just things I think that keep our clients coming back to us. It's those small details, you know, that they 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 recognize that we are taking that step to do that for them. Yeah, I love it. It's amazing. Okay, so how do you assess your candidate's experience and 
make sure that, you know, they're just as good in person as they are in. Um... I think the only way to really do that is to, you know, follow up with them in a year. If we play oh. someone with, with one of our clients and they're still one gainfully employed with them, happy mm -hmm. in their scenario, and our clients are happy with them, that's really the only way to say, to look back on it and say, this was a successful placement because we did X, Y, and Z. Um, but if, if we're talking contractor to us, where we can really, I mean, we can boast about what our, you know, our metrics are, our placement rate, our, our you know, retention rate, our time to fill, some of those things where, you know, we're going to have those numbers to present and to provide for our clientele. But ultimately, it's going to be, did we find the right person for the right, you know, for your metrics, for the right compensation, for the right regional, uh, you know, geographical fit? And are they still employed there? That's really what, you know, what we're about. And Kristen will have numerous success stories of, you know, I placed a foreman in 2012 and now he's a, he's the, the branch president. And that's what, that's what real success looks like to us is, are we placing the right people for upward mobility and growth? Or are we just placing people for six months to a year and then they're out of there to the, onto the next? Cause that's yeah. not what we do. That's not how we operate. Yeah. I like what you said, um, placing people for upward mobility and growth. And I mean, even if, I mean, placing people to stay in that role, like that role for years, that's great too. But I love that you said placing them for upward mobility, like they're going to take this company further. They're going to grow within the company. They're not just going to stay stagnant in that role. They want to um, grow. I think that's cool. Well, or on, or on the flip side, let's say you're working with a smaller organization who doesn't want to grow. They, they want to retire in mm -hmm. five years. When you're talking huh? to a candidate, you have to make sure to deliver that message to them is, listen, this is going to be a PM role for the rest of your days here. And are you comfortable in that? Or are you at, you know, or in three to five years, are you going to be looking for that next step? Because if you are, this is probably not going to be the home for you. But if you just yeah. love edge estimating and you like to just sit at your desk, heads down, work on those projects all day long, this would be the great role for you. Maybe you'll get year, year, mm -hmm. yearly salary increases, but you're never going to go from an edge estimator to let's say ops manager or whatever it may be. So those are also yeah. like, that's the, the pivot that you have to make sure that you're doing is when you're talking to candidates and your clients is, is there growth in this company? And if there's not, what does it look like money-wise growth for them if they stick around, you know? So those are really yeah. important things we got to ask too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for all of the contractors out there listening, those are the things to ask your recruiting company, like high peak, peak staffing. Um, again, vetting that vetter, um, making sure that they understand the role that you are looking to fill. So can you share any examples of a time when poor vetting when a poor vetting process for a recruiter negatively impacted the hiring process, maybe from yeah. some horror stories of your clients. Well, so let's, if it's a company that does not know about us, let's say, and I'm, I'm in sales. So I'm always trying to, you know, grow high peak staffing, pick up new accounts, um, fill more job orders. I, it's a, my favorite thing to do when you know a company might say no five times and then they finally say yes you know i'm so excited and i get on the phone with them and i'm ready to tell them all about high peak staffing and they say no you know we've had nothing but terrible experiences with recruiters it makes i'm so excited to hear that because you i know that they're <laughs> going to tell me we hired recruiters that didn't know what they were talking about they were sending sending us candidates for positions that don't fit our company culture or the skill set that we need. And after sending us 10 resumes and us, you know, interviewing three of those candidates, they all, you know, no one accepted a role or no role. Uh, we never extended an offer. So I know when I hear that, I'm able to say, you know, walk me through your stories. The biggest thing is probably time and time management. They're losing time um, when they hire uh, the horse story is that they'll, you know, go through five to 10 interviews, three to four second interviews. A month has gone by because we're doing a bunch of different calendars. And at the end of the day, no one can agree that this person is going to be the best fit for them. So the difference for us is that when you're going to work with a specialized recruiter is 
we're going to get take down that job order. We're going to figure out what your requirements are, and then we're going to turn around and get you those candidates in a timely manner. And if it's a remote position, like a remote area that's not as, you know, not a big metro, we we tell them we front load. You know, it may be two weeks before you get a resume from us, but they will start coming through the door. So we set that, you know, we make sure that we're transparent there. But a lot of times what we do here is, you know, when you don't have a specialized recruiter, you're just getting maybe general construction candidates that are awesome. They'd be awesome for a certain company, but not specifically to roofing. I think that's great. And I, I, again, I just love that it's specialized to roofing. Um, And I think, like you said, that is just a really important detail and something to ask. So are there any pitfalls to working with a recruiter that a contractor needs to avoid that we haven't touched on already? Yeah, I would say there's a few things that, and this is not, you know, maybe specific to us. I feel like this is in general. Yeah. It's when we see that, that some of our, you know, clients are either dragging their feet or taking too long to hire, we start losing, you know, qualified, really good candidates, interested candidates. And I think so, you know, if, if we've got clients that one are not communicating openly and clearly with us, you know, we, we, we say every day, clear and open lines of communication is the only way to succeed in this industry. And if we yep. can't get in touch with you within a day, we don't know if we're going to be the right people for you because we have to communicate. So if we present someone on Monday and it's Wednesday and we haven't heard from you, that person might have another interview or another job offer or something that's, that's going on. So timing of yeah. presents to interviewing is is crucial it's crucial in any industry more so i mean but especially specifically for us um so the timing of that we don't want to you know vet these people get them excited about a company or an opportunity and then that opportunity is it take you know gets lagged on um yeah. so we say every day follow up follow up follow up well we do that every day with our clients our candidates each other um our team so we are we are definitely I'd say that timing aspect, Kristen, I don't know if you agree or maybe add something yeah. on to that. Yeah, I would say there's, schedules are always changing in this industry. So um, when when it comes to hiring managers, so it's really just the transparency aspect. We are all OK if, you know, there's been a storm and, you know, you're not able to do the interviews because of that reason, maybe or if it's someone out of state and you're not able to talk to them, that's okay, but don't not show up, you know, just let us yeah. know, keep that open line of communication open um, because you want to also, as much as we are working for our clients, we're also trying to help candidates get the best job for them. So we want to make sure mm-hmm. that every great thing that we've said about this company, you know, comes to fruition. And sometimes when, you know, things are missed or the ball's dropped, you know, um, you lose momentum. We can always bounce back and recover, but we just want to always try to keep it on the up and up. Absolutely. Does that make sense? That's so true. Especially in this, in this market right now, this hiring market. I mean, there's so, there's so many people looking for jobs, but there's also a labor shortage at the same time. (laughs) And I don't know how those two things can coincide at the same time, but they are actively. (laughs) Um, and so, Yeah. Being on your toes, being responsive. So important. I couldn't agree more. Um, What advice would you give companies listening to this podcast right now, looking to build long-term relationships with staffing agencies? Say, do your homework, you know, make sure that kind of the things that that we've discussed throughout this entirety of this podcast are, you know, make sure you're doing the, the appropriate things to vet these recruiting agencies. Try to find somebody industry specific, uh, there are other people out there. That's, I think, the the thing that you're going to see and find out when you, you know, we do more of these podcasts is we accept competition. We want it. We thrive for that. And so, like, we are, we're not going to be beating someone's door down to be exclusive recruiters for them only because it's, sometimes it just doesn't work that way. Sometimes companies have 200 openings that, that they need to fill. And if we said we are the only ones that can do this or going to do all of these, we might come up short. So, we invite that competition, but for a for a contractor looking for a recruiter, do your homework. Make sure you've got someone that's industry specific that understands your culture, your needs. You know, is is familiar with the terminology. Someone says TPO to you, they're they're not. You know, they're they're going to understand what you're talking about, <laughs> what surfaces you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so I would say do your homework. Make make those decisions. Um, you know, educationally, not rationally, not irrationally, yeah. off the off the hook. So. 
you know, do your homework. Well, another thing is like, uh, we are, you know, we all work on a contingent basis too. So, you know, there's no upfront cost. So, oh, you know, nice. if you're, if you are curious, you know, and you reach out to someone like High Peak Staffing and you, you want to just kind of see what we can provide or, you know, what type of candidate pool we have, there is no charge for that. So, um, you know, if you're forecasting like Q4, or Q1 of next year, and you're like, I think we might need an edge estimator or a production superintendent, whatever it may be, you know, and you're transparent along your timeline with us, we can recruit that role, start sending you candidates. And that's kind of really what changes, you know, the timeline for us is as soon as we start providing those candidates, all of a sudden opportunities are made um, because they, they realize, oh my gosh, there is this great candidate in this area. We have to talk to them. Um, yeah. So, you know, those are the types of things is, um, and then if, if we, if an offer is extended and they accept and we don't bill until they start. So, you know, you get to try test the waters all the way up until the candidate walks in the front door. Yeah. Amazing. I, the last thing that I'd say is someone trustworthy. You know, we, we, Absolutely. you know, meet with our clients routinely. We fly to places, we drive to meetings. You know, we are open and honest with our clientele, with our partners, because that's ultimately who we are partnered with. Now we care, you know, deeply about our candidate pool and about our candidates. And that's who, you know, we want to make sure we get the right people through the door. At the end of the day, our clients are our partners. And so we had a, you know, a nightmare story from a client just last week where a recruiter was working a little bit more on behalf of the candidate you know, saying things that were not true, kind of, you know, getting things that, um, that were, you know, I got this for you. You only asked for this, but I got you more. And, you know, ultimately we are our clients partners. And so yeah. we try to do the best thing we can for our clientele and make sure that, that our relationship is long lasting and it's not yeah. just one off scenarios. Yeah, totally, completely. So how does a contractor... If you've enjoyed the ride, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join us on every roofing adventure. Make sure to visit rooferscoffeeshop.com to learn more. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next roofing road trip.